All right here. We hey. are live. Yes, we are. Hi guys and welcome. This is the first webinar SC Ranking is going to be doing with a guest speaker partner partnering up, so to say. And we couldn't be more excited to see you guys here. And uh, yeah, my name is Andrew and I'm part of the marketing team at SC Ranking. And I'm right now located in our Kiev office. And uh, I'm joined by Tommy from ClickMinded. Here cool. we go. We got a we got a party. We got an Andrew. We got a nerd party here. We got a bunch wow. of S Ooh. SEO nerds. <laughs> I can't keep up with the chat anymore. Okay. There we uh, so go. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. Everybody can hear us. Okay. So uh, I'm very excited that you guys are here um, for the for this workshop that Tommy and I are going to do about finding new opportunities to grow your business business with keyword research. Let's take it away. Tommy is going to start off, and I'll be also joining uh, joining him and um, telling you guys something uh, um, something closer to the, to the end of the webinar. So stay stay tuned. But for the time being, Tommy, take it away. Sweet, yeah, Andrew, thanks so much, um, and I really appreciate it. We are fired up to be doing this one with you here. Um, a couple of people said I'm coming in a little bit blurry. Sorry about that. I'm, I'm actually logging in from. Uh, from Honolulu, Hawaii right now. So I'm trying to work with the, the upload speeds here. It might be a little bit slow, sorry about that, but it should get better um, as we move along. Um, yeah, like Andrew said, there's a, there's a little chat button there, down there. You can go ahead and type in anything you want. And if you have actual questions, you can toggle the feature and, and ask, ask actual questions. We didn't talk about Andrew's swag. Did you see that, that very subtle SE ranking shirt he had that we were talking beforehand that we need? Um, we need some better click-minded swag. Look at that. Look at that. The shirt, the mug. Yeah, I got the mug too. He's doing it right. He's doing it right. Um, cool. So we got a lot to cover today. So I'm going to turn off my screen and switch over to slides. You can, again, ask questions um, as we move along. And actually, real quick before we do this, I'd love to see where everyone is coming in from. So go ahead and type the location you're logging in from, uh, what city or country are you here from? I, I love to see this SE rankings, um, you know, sort of audience is, is, is gonna be very interesting to see. Christian Thomas, uh, a buddy of mine from high school is here. This is funny, a Sahiganer. Nice to see you. So where's everyone coming in from? San Diego, St. Louis, Spain, uh, Los Angeles, Tel Aviv, Atlanta, Georgia, San Francisco, Indianapolis. We got a lot of folks here. Okay, cool. Um, very, very interesting to see. So I'm going to turn off my screen here and uh, start sharing slides and we will get rolling. We got a lot of people from a lot of different places here. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this off and then swap this over. And uh, let me know if you can see my slides. It looks like you can and we will get rolling, okay. Cool, so we got a ton to do today. We're gonna fly through this. Um, we're gonna be talking about finding new opportunities to grow your business with keyword research, right? So uh, let's roll here. Welcome, thank you again for coming. We got a ton to cover. I need you to get juiced. I need you to get fired up like my little homegirl here. Girl eating cotton candy at a baseball game dot gif. That's the level of excitement. I need you at now. So this is an investment of your time. Don't waste it, right? Well, I want you to follow the Shia LaBeouf principle here, <laughs> which is to just do it, right? That means get the most out of this. Close Skype, close Facebook, close Messenger. Maybe get comfortable, move to a quieter room, grab a pen or a piece of paper if you, if you prefer that way, and then full screen it for optimized viewing. I like to take notes offline when I do this. Um, and so, oh, let's see, I'm gonna feel like it's a little bit dark. Uh, there we go, okay, there we go. And yeah, Andrew, let me know if everything looks okay on your end, feel free to interrupt me. Um, I can't see the chat right now while I'm presenting, so feel free to interrupt me. Yeah, you, you actually just, yeah, you fixed it because it was actually pretty dark and now, right. now it's sort of, now it's not as bad. Okay, right great, now. cool, sounds good, sounds good. Uh, so yeah, so, so um, like I said before, you know, if you're gonna commit to this, actually do it, right? Go to a comfortable room, um, get a little bit more quieter. I like to take offline notes when I, when I do something like this and then full screen it for optimized viewing. So after this one hour session, you're gonna learn three powerful 
things. The first is how to find out what your ideal customers are searching for and make your website the very first place that they visit. The next is how to create a comprehensive SEO strategy based on the expected ROI of every keyword that you're targeting. And then the third are the exact templates you can download to implement everything you see here and get results immediately. So this class is gonna be informative, but we're actually gonna give you all the templates and cheat sheets and checklists that you need afterwards for free. So yes, yeah, stay to the end. At the, bonus of this, uh, at the end of this webinar, we're gonna be doing an overview of all the exclusive bonuses you're be, you'll be getting for free in a follow-up email. And then just a heads up, there's gonna be a fantastic offer to sign up for SE ranking at the end of this webinar. Sweet, so first of all, who is this bozo? Uh, my name is Tommy, this photo was taken earlier today, and I, uh, I'm just kidding. This is, <laughs> my name's Tommy, um, I'm a search engine optimization nerd. I've been doing SEO for about 10 years. I used to manage SEO at PayPal and Airbnb, and now I run a digital marketing training course called ClickMinded. My brother and sister get so mad at me when I show this photo. Look at those, you remember bowl cuts? You guys, <laughs> who remembers the 90s? Man, my brother and I were the king of bowl cuts. So, okay, before we get started, I wanna know if this sounds familiar to new to you. And actually, let me know in the chat. I just opened up the chat um, on another device here. So let me know in the chat if this sounds like you, right? Maybe you've been working on increasing traffic through search engine optimization, and most of the advice you find online, it goes something like this. Maybe it's something like optimize for featured snippets, right? Or publish content regularly. Get ready for mobile first indexing. Focus on long tail keywords. These kind of like buzzwordy sort of topics and ideas, right? Like if you, if you open up a new tab now and you Google SEO tips, you're gonna find a lot of this stuff. You know, entrepreneur.com and Business Insider and this kind of garbage, right? You feel like you're doing everything that experts recommend, but you still can't get any significant organic traffic to your site. Look, if any of this sounds familiar, it's not just you. I get this, right? When you follow this stuff, when you follow tips and tricks and growth hacks and these short-term kind of wins, you always end up getting the exact same outcome, which is no results, right? So the problem with all this content is it doesn't cover the most important aspect of search engine optimization, in my opinion, which is your keyword strategy, the high level strategy stuff that dictates all of your decision making. So here's what a great keyword strategy can do for your business and it's why we're doing a class on this today. Right? Here's how, at least how it helped us at ClickMinded. Right? We found massive keyword opportunities that attract thousands of qualified leads to our site every single month, terms like SEO certification or SEO checklists. Right? The other interesting part about it is we don't need to create content every day or every week or every month because we were really smart about this upfront. Right? We compete with some really heavy hitter sites like, like Moz, right? SEO Moz, moz.com. Um, we only have a handful of pieces of content in Google search index um, relative to some of these other massive sites, but they were done in a strategic way. We don't need to publish every single day to get a lot of the outcome. 72% of our revenue starts with an organic visit, and it is all derived from our keyword strategy, right? The best part about this is your competitors are probably not doing this stuff, right? They're probably too lazy. They're probably doing a, a, a half-hearted effort around this. And you don't need a massive budget or a team either. Uh, right, so you just have to want it more than your competitors. If you're one of the little guys, you can absolutely apply this stuff. So that's sort of the high level overview of what we're going to be talking about today and why it's important. So let's get started. We got a lot to cover in a very short amount of time. The first is the search framework, a really quick five minute overview for people who are kind of newer to search engine optimization. Uh, if you're an absolute pro, bear with me through this, this first couple minutes and we'll get moving. We're gonna be talking about how to perform keyword research, your keyword research and mapping, right? We're gonna do a live demo um, with SE ranking a little bit later on and Andrew, and then templates that you can use to start implementing today, followed by Q and A. Cool, so let's get rolling. First and foremost is the search framework. So if you're brand new, this is gonna be super helpful. If you're, if you're, an, if you're an absolute pro and you've been doing this for 10 years, uh, bear with me here and actually let me know whether you're a beginner or a pro uh, in the chat and, and, and let me know what you think about how we like to size this up. So we have a very simple five-step framework that we love to use uh, in order to size up any sort of internet marketing strategy, right? And we're gonna go through all of these steps very quickly now, right? The first one is searcher intent in user demographic. So as we think about our customers on the internet, we like to take them through this five-step process. And the first one is search your intent and user demographic, right? So who is the user? 
what is the user searching for and what stage of the funnel are they in? And let's go through a, a couple of examples here. So my little sister got married recently and we're going to use her as an example. This is actually their dorky little wedding photo. Look at my, look at my brother-in-law rocking Nikes in, <laughs> in his wedding photo like an absolute clown. I love this guy. But okay, so my, my sister got married, but let's go back in time and pretend uh, and, and go back to the moment where she'd been engaged and she was planning her bachelorette party. In the U.S., we call these bachelorette parties. I think a, a lot of people in the U.K. or in Europe, they call them hen parties, I think. Um, but so she was planning her bachelorette party, right, the big party before her wedding. And let's take a look at an example of what she might have been Googling up to the point where she booked, right? So she goes to Google, she types in bachelorette party and maybe bachelorette party ideas, bachelorette party destinations, bachelorette party New Orleans, and she starts to get closer and closer and closer to converting. Right? As she's typing all these things into Google, we can size them up based on where in the funnel she is, that buyer journey, right? So top of funnel might be bachelorette party or bachelorette party ideas, the middle funnel, bachelorette party destinations or bachelorette party location, right? In this case, it's New Orleans. And then right at the bottom, bachelorette party New Orleans August promo code. She's like, I know what I want. I'm almost there. My credit card is in my hand. I'm about to check out. Right. So this is kind of the first sort of step we would go through if we were targeting this user. Right. Let's say we're a travel company that's optimizing for uh, bachelorette parties. Right. Uh, and so we know who our user is. Right. She's a 27 year old woman recently engaged and she's planning her bachelorette party. And we know kind of uh, what she would be searching for. That's the first step of this five step framework. The next two steps are the digital asset and the digital medium. Right. The digital asset at a really high level, just rolling back here, what type of content will give the user what they're looking for, right? So uh, what a, lo a lot of people get this wrong now, 2019, 2020, um, you're, most of the time your digital asset is going to be a URL on your site. But the point here is that it doesn't have to be, right? Your digital asset could be a blog post, but it could also be a forum response, a social media post, a video or digital tool or image or review, maybe to webinar. <laughs> wink, wink, what you're on right now, right? Product demo or trial or a listing page, right? So what is the asset that you're going to use to attract your user? In this particular case, we're a travel company that's trying to design a bachelorette party to target my sister. The asset we're going to use is a video, right? We're going to use a video. The next is the digital medium at a really high level. Where does it live? Now, for most people, this is going to be just on your site. It's going to live on your site. But the point here is that it doesn't have to. Right, so it could be your site, but it could also be YouTube. It could be Google Places or Yelp or Amazon, Quora, Pinterest, or the App Store. It really depends on your business, but it, it can live in a number of different places, right? In this particular case, let's say this asset is going to live on YouTube, right? Next is optimization, right? Is the document as relevant as possible for the users? Have we done everything we can to maximize traffic to it? What would it take to maximize traffic to it? And is it worth the Effort. So in this particular case, right, let's say we're creating this, this video asset to attract women planning their bachelorette party. And we would very simply, and you know, the primary keyword we were optimizing for is bachelorette party New Orleans. You know, we would start to ask ourselves, is the primary keyword in the title, right? Do we have a high number of subscribers? What's our view count? Are people fully watching the video? How many likes do we have on, on YouTube, et cetera, et cetera. This is gonna be different for every asset and every medium that you have. And we're not gonna go through all the details of, of how to optimize every individual document. But this is kind of the point of the framework is you can use this um, for any asset and medium and customer avatar that you want. The fifth step and the most important step is the nudge. What is the next action we want the user to take, right? So where do we, where do we want them to go? want to be like this little monkey pushing, <laughs> nudging his little monkey friend into the river here, right? What do we want the user to do, right? So the nudge here, like if it's top of funnel, maybe it's view more content or view another video, right? If it's the middle funnel, maybe it's enter their email or call a phone number or follow us on social. Or if it's the bottom funnel, maybe it's buy now or sign up with a promo code, something like that, right? So in this particular case, maybe we have an annotation or a call to action in the YouTube description. Click here to lock in a 20% discount on our bachelorette party group packages, right? And so as we do that, right, uh, we can move these users through and just going back here, we have these five steps. And the point here is you actually want um, to be doing this for each step of the funnel. This is not the funnel. You're going to go through each one of these steps at each stage of the funnel, right? 
And so we're going to be talking about that um, in a little bit more. But that's a really high level overview of how it works. And one super important thing that I want to cover before we move on is to treat this stuff like a regular human relationship. I think one of the uh, one of the best ways to think about this is this example I have. I was at a party a few years ago and I met an insurance salesman. And it was the worst experience of my life. This guy <laughs> was so slimy and so sleazy and he met me and basically said, okay, so you know, why don't we get coffee tomorrow and what's it gonna take to, to get you into a life insurance policy uh, by the end of the week? And it was just like, have you ever met these people that are incredibly salesy the minute you meet them and it's just sort of gross? Internet marketers do this all the time. They don't treat their sales funnel like a regular human relationship. They end up acting like an insurance salesman at a party and it's gross. They basically get a bunch of traffic, it comes out of their sites, and, uh, and they start to sell right away. So one sort of thing to think about as we, as we talk about this today is to treat your sales funnel like a regular human relationship, right? Top of funnel is, hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. What's your name? Where are you from? What do you do? Middle funnel is, oh, this is really great chatting with you. I hope I provided a lot of value. You know, what's a way I can, I can follow up with you, like email or phone number. And then bottom funnel is, hey, do you want to go get dinner sometime? Let's get to know each other even more, you know, leading up to a conversion. So, um, so, so do think about that. Do think about treating this stuff like a regular human relationship. So we've gone through that five step sort of process. Let's go through a couple of different examples at the top, middle and bottom funnel with different companies. Let's look at a top of funnel example with a travel site. How about a travel site that wants to focus on family travelers? So we have this term family vacation ideas. It's searched for 18,000 times a month, right? So let's go through those five steps that we just talked about. The searcher intent might be travel planning. It's gonna be top of funnel. The digital asset and medium we'll use in this case will be a blog post on your website. We would fully optimize the blog post so that we're ranking number one on Google and the opt-in would be, the nudge would be an opt-in for a family-friendly travel checklist. Maybe we're photos travel, we've created a ton of value in, in making this awesome epic post, it's ranking really well on Google, and then right at the bottom of the page, hey, enter your email for this free family travel checklist, right? So that's a top of funnel thing, we're grabbing the user's contact information, we're moving to bottom funnel. Let's look at a, or a middle funnel, excuse me, let's look at a middle funnel example. How about an e-commerce site that sells skinny ties to hipsters. So we have the term skinny tie wardrobe tips that search for 1,900 times a month. All right, search your intent might be wardrobe tips, it's middle funnel. The digital asset medium might be a video on YouTube. Uh, we would fully optimize it. And then the nudge would be an annotation on a video that links to a blog post with the top 20 skinny ties and a promo code, something like this. So maybe the user is already familiar with our brand. They kind of know who we are. They're looking for something pretty specific which is a skinny tie wardrobe tip. So here we have an example, GQ, they have an, a YouTube video, get the skinny on the skinny tie. Uh, we might be pushing them into the bottom of the funnel. Now the bottom funnel example, we'll do a, a brick and mortar location. How about an Italian restaurant with customers that check reviews online before they visit in person, right? So we have this, this company, Tony's Pizza, a very popular pizza place in San Francisco. So Tony's Pizza's reviews, search for 500 times a month. Uh, so the searcher intent here is branded search. It's bottom of the funnel. This user's heard of the brand before. They're about to convert, but they, but they haven't quite yet. The digital asset in this case might be a review. Uh, and the digital medium it could live on it might be Yelp. We would fully optimize it. And the nudge could be a Yelp coupon code. So this user has heard of the business before. They're thinking about going. They're reading a couple of reviews about it. They're about to check out and then maybe they get a notification or they see, um, they see a notification on Yelp that says, hey, book now through OpenTable and get 10% off, something like that, right? So, so just flying through these examples, and we're gonna move on to the meat and potatoes in just a moment. But the idea here is we have this five-step framework that you can use for each step of the funnel, right? You can kind of move your users through each step of the funnel, and, and the digital asset and the medium will vary a lot based on your business. Uh, but, but we love using these five steps through each stage of the funnel. So today, really high level overview for everyone, kind of digital marketing 101. Um, if you're new to this, if, if you've been in the game for a while, you're gonna say, yeah, obviously I knew all this stuff, Tommy, that's fine. But today we're gonna focus on that very first step of the framework, the searcher intent and the user demographic, right? Who is the user? What are they searching for? And why are they searching for it? So let's dive into this now. So here's 
what we're going to be talking about today, right? How to perform keyword research in 2020 and beyond. So today, most people are doing keyword research like it's 2001. And let me know if you've done any of this before, if, if, if you're experienced and, and you've been in the game for that long, right? But a lot of people are messing this up and they're making two very critical mistakes. The first is they use the Google Keyword Planner as their main keyword research tool. I don't wanna to hate on this tool too much. It got us to where we are today. You know, I, I was using it a lot, uh, maybe 10 years ago, and it was sort of the industry standard for a while. But today, you just can't use it anymore, right? So unless you're spending a very considerable amount of money on Google Ads, you're only gonna get ranges on search volumes. It's just not helpful, right? The fact that florist or florist near me is searched for somewhere between 100,000 and a million times a month isn't useful, right? So that's the big mistake a lot of people make. The second thing is they focus exclusively on search volume to determine which keywords they're going after. They don't look at any other data points, right? If you only focus on search volume, you're gonna miss out on massive traffic and revenue opportunities, right? So you need to take a couple of other things into consideration. So today, you're gonna learn a better way to do keyword research, right? So there's a couple things we can talk about here. The first is using a trusted third-party tool, third-party keyword research tool, like the one offered by SE Ranking, right? Now this way, you're gonna get more accurate data, more ideas, and better metrics than if you use Google's Keyword Planner. Right. The second is leveraging difficulty and competition data to enrich your analysis and make better decisions. Right? We can look at more than just the search volume. We can take a bunch of other metrics um, and factor those into our calculations. Difficulty and competition data helps you target keywords that you can realistically rank for. It gives the little guys a bigger opportunity, especially if you have well-funded and very scary competitors like we do, right? So instead of trying to compete with the New York Times or BuzzFeed, you're going to be able to discover untapped opportunities you can capitalize on quickly and easily. This way, you can target keywords that will generate a massive number of leads and revenue, even if they don't have a lot of search volume. This is the sweet spot. And then we have a bonus tip, right? Discovering additional opportunities by spying on your competitors. So we're going to dive into a lot of this next. We're going to see how this looks in practice. So on, uh, Andrew, if you're there, I think I'm going to swap over. What I wanted to um, uh, show you guys today is how to conduct co keyword research in SEO ranking. And uh, to, to do this, we're going to select one of the examples that Tommy had. Um, so we're going to take the top of funnel example about family vacation ideas. So the goal is the searcher intent is uh, they're making traveling plans. And we're thinking of making writing a blog post uh, and posting it on our website. So this this is basically um, the rough idea. So let's uh, switch over to the tool and, and see what we can do. So SEO ranking is packed with a number of SEO and marketing tools, but today we're only going to focus on uh, one of them. It's the SEO PPC competitor research tool. So basically, once the screen loads up, all you have to do is enter a, a keyword. So we're going to do family vacation ideas and let's uh, select a region. So we have a lot of different options. So let's uh, let's go for for US and click analyze. Once everything loads up, we can straight away see uh, um, all the SEO uh, data on this specific keyword. So we know that its search volume is over 18,000 searches per month and it has a uh, click cost assessment of under $3 and uh, the level of Google ads competition is pretty average. So, and below here we have the top organic search results, meaning the websites that rank organically for the specific search query and as well as advertisers. But we're, what we're gonna look at right now is the similar keywords tab. Um, so yeah, let's click to expand it and get a lot, a lot more information on this specific search query. So under this tab, we get um, keywords that are topically similar to the word that we're looking for. And, and uh, in addition to the keyword itself, we're getting, we're getting a search volume, the cost per click, and the competition uh, in, on Google Ads as well. So at each stage, we have to think, uh, what is our goal? Our goal is to create a, a blog post and post it on our website. So just keep that in mind as um, we're analyzing all this data. So perhaps so as we scroll down, we were not we 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 found a better option to target initially since uh, the family vacation ideas keyword doesn't uh, has a search volume which is pretty high. It's eighteen thousand. We want to try something 
uh, like in the sweet spot. So something is um, with a lower search volume and a lower level of competition so that it will be easier uh, to work with it. So um, as I'm scrolling down, I see a lot of different options. And for example, a cheap family vacation ideas sounds like a good topic to write uh, a blog post uh, on. So let, let's further expand um, this specific keyword to get additional information on it. So once again, we get the overview of, uh, of all the SEO data and the organic and paid, paid results. Uh, and now we have a different list of similar keywords that was created since we changed our initial uh, keyword that we're targeting. So yeah, we're just taking more ideas and gathering them at every stage. So family uh, vacation ideas, uh, um, Vacation ideas for families is still pretty close to our original keyword, but cheap family vacations and, or, um, yeah, so a lot of them are like cheap and affordable. So you can, you can go ahead and uh, just export everything and then analyze the data in an XLS or CSV file format if that's more convenient for you, or you just can, can uh, or you can just keep going and hand pick the ones you want. Um, you can also use the filter to just, just for example, uh, filter out re results that have a, re a really high search volume or their level of competition is uh, out of our league. Um, and um, yeah, so let's w once we're done with analyzing this data, what we can do is uh, go on to the next tab, which is the related keywords tab. And this tab um, provides a list of keywords that have um, that have the same pages featuring in SERPs as the analyzed search query. So basically, Cheap Family Vacation Ideas has the same number of pages uh, ranking in SERPs as affordable family vacation ideas. So mean, meaning that this is a very relevant uh, keyword to our specific uh, um, uh, search query that we're looking for, that we're analyzing further. So as, we, as you can see, there are um, over 2,500 uh, keywords in this specific tab under, under this specific tab and you can uh, just like you did in the similar keywords tab just scroll down the list and look for ideas that are relevant for your specific blog post uh, yeah the, but what words you you need to use in it to get more eyes looking at your content hey andrew really really yeah. quick um just to interrupt you for a minute so just to clarify the relevancy metric you're describing there is basically se ranking is taking a keyword you're looking at all the URLs in Google, and then they're taking an additional keyword, in this case, affordable family vacation ideas, and you're looking for those URLs to show up again, and that 66% yeah. means there's that level of overlap. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Sweet. Okay. okay. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, just, just confirming that. Thanks. Yeah, so, th so this is the, um, this helps you um, better understand if this is relevant to your specific topic, but, but still you have to do all the uh, analytical work, analytical work yourself just to figure out if this is in fact relevant for your specific idea that you have in mind. Um, okay, so um, once again, again, you have to make sure, ma analyze all the data that we, ha we have available here just to make sure that this is something that you can reach, that's something that is, uh, uh, that you were able to, like a keyword that, that you will be able to produce good results with but you can just go ahead and export everything again and then maybe analyze the bulk of it. It's, it's a bit, it makes sense to maybe even bucket uh, your ideas, like the, key, the keywords that you find here, bucket them into topically related uh, subcategories and maybe you wanna create uh, a, a blog post about cheap vac vacation ideas for like uh, for Europe or East Coast or West Coast and you just have to break them down because all these are good ideas and these uh, long tail keywords usually don't have um, a, a very high search volume so just um, but but the uh, good, the good thing about uh, long tail keywords is that these are terms that people use to describe their problems. So if you find a, a term that is very specific for the idea that you have, it's a, it makes sense to use it because once a person enters enters the specific um, search query into the search box on Google, then uh, they will be the ideal fit for for your piece of content. And they'll be glad that they found it and, and possibly convert. But you have to analyze everything at each step. And, and uh, what I wanted to show you, uh, in addition to keyword research in this tool, is that we can also do competitive analysis. So we're back on the page that analyzes this uh, search query with the overview. But we want to see what um, websites we're competing with. So let's click to see uh, to get a detailed report of our organic competitors. But keep in mind that depending on your on your SERP position, where you are in the, uh, in the search results, 
you have to target websites that are closer to you. Uh, so for example, if you're at the hundredth spot, uh, at the hundredth spot, then it doesn't really make sense for you to, to target um, the top uh, one ranking or the top five uh, ranking um, websites because they are way out of, out of your league. So maybe what you have to do is target somebody at position number 95 and, and so closer to what you are actually, where you are actually. So they, they are your immediate competitors and you want to see what they're doing different to get ahead of them, to outrank them. So since we're um, writing a, a post theoretically about cheap family vacation ideas, uh, we have to uh, also find a, a competitor that offers a similar piece of content so that we, we know that we're on the same page, that we're going in the, in the right direction. So let's, uh, I see that there's um, magazine triviago.com cheap family vacation ideas, but we, we can also click here to get a preview of this specific website just to make sure that it is indeed a blog post, that we're not just gonna compete with something that is not exactly uh, our competitor. Mom knows best around the country. Okay, uh, so yeah, it's taking a while to, for, for it to load up, but as you can see, it's, it's giving us different examples, like for, North, uh, for different regions uh, to, to, to go on vacation. So basically, it is a blog post, so we're good. And so this is a good competitor. So let's analyze it by clicking on, on this specific, specific competitor. And now we can see an overview of not the keyword, but this uh, domain, the entire domain. And as we can see at the top, since we selected the US as our main region, uh, we're getting a summary of uh, its organic and paid uh, campaigns, but we also see, uh, um, see the dis different statistics on other regions that this specific web website is targeting. So maybe this is a good idea if you're planning to expand to other markets, you can also see where your competitors are, are headed. And, and as you scroll down, you see um, the number of total uh, keywords that they have in an organic search, which is over 700,000. <clears> and as uh, we can also see uh, how many paid keywords they have, which is 25,000, a, a little a bit more. But we're also interested in keywords. So let's scroll down and see what organic keywords these guys are ranking for. Once again, we're scrolling down and now we're getting the good stuff. Sure, they're gonna have a lot of branded keywords here or very specific uh, specific keywords to like link to a specific destination, but this is all up to you. You have to understand that we're analyzing not the specific website um, URL, but the entire website. So they may have a lot of different pages. As you can see the URL, they have a lot of different URLs that they are uh, using different keywords to target. So once again, you, just, you, need to, you can organize them, uh, sort them by position, by search volume, just depending on what works best for you. You can also use the filter, it's just, to, just to filter out all the results that you don't wanna see. But as you go down, just look for ones that are relevant to your specific um, piece of content. Well, at this stage, or you can, uh, you, depending on where you are in your campaign, you can analyze their entire website. I mean, it wouldn't hurt just to know what, uh, what, all the keywords that they're targeting. Maybe you can find something useful for yourself. So, um, and Andrew, Andrew, just to interrupt you here real quick, just for everyone who's asking questions, um, you can either keep asking questions or wait to the end. Um, we're just gonna uh, keep watching Andrew go through this tool and we're gonna answer all these questions at the end. So feel free to ask them now or hold them, but we're not going to skip over you. So just wanted to let everyone in the chat know that. Yeah, sorry about that. Feel free to yeah. keep going. Yeah, thanks. Um, Okay, and so this is basically uh, uh, an overview of the organic keywords that your competitor, uh, one of your competitors is using. Uh, but in addition to the organic uh, keywords that they have, we can also take a look at uh, the paid, uh, their paid campaigns and see what keywords they are ranking for in paid search. So once again, we get an overview of everything going on with their paid campaigns, the countries, uh, the amount of keywords, their, their estimated traffic, amount, and cost. But this is the good stuff. Um, they also have a list of keywords with the, uh, along with their um, ranking positions. But the best part of this specific area of the tool is that it has the ads that, these, uh, that this website used to advertise on Google. So, and you can actually see the text and uh, maybe borrow it or put your, your own spin on it just to make it, make it better and uh, use it in your own campaigns. So basically you can just go down and, and scroll through all the results. They have a lot of different pages because they're using a whole lot of words. Yeah, you can see that they have 25,000 paid keywords. So just depending on uh, on uh, your topic and uh, your website and uh, all, all of your goals, you just have to 
analyze each one of them and take the ones that are that make sense for you. And yeah, and that is uh, and and in, in, in addition, you can also have uh, a div, div options of looking at the ranking changes, the ads history, and, and even com uh, comparing your competitors just to see which words uh, keywords you have in common, which words are missing, which keywords are missing for your site, for your competitor's site, and which keywords are unique uh, among your competitors. So this is also a really, really uh, cool tool. Yeah, thank you for that. So we're we got, we're gonna have a ton of questions we have to answer right now. We we're gonna be bringing you back in just a moment. We might we might uh, pull up the tool as well. I'd love to dive into some of those things you just went through. But if it's okay. cool, um, I'll just sort of kind of summarize what you just went over. So if you want to jump off for now, and um, I'll take over uh, from here. But I'm just want to do a quick recap of what we've talked about today so far. So. Um, Cool, so quick recap of everything here today. So first, sorry, before without a keyword strategy, you might be doing this, right? Randomly trying a bunch of SEO hacks and tips, tips and attempts to grow traffic and sales, spending a lot of time creating content that generates no traffic and not getting results. With a keyword strategy, there's a lot more you can do, right? Identifying the exact keywords your users are searching for. We have a bunch of questions about how to do that uh, even even more with, with Andrew in just a moment. Um, investing in just a few pieces of content that drive a massive amount of traffic and then knowing exactly how to allocate resources based on the, expe based on the expected ROI of your SEO efforts. So here's how to make use of this framework today, right? If you're an entrepreneur, you can relentlessly focus on creating content that ranks for, for keywords that your users are searching for. If you're a consultant or an agency, you can use this stuff to create amazing proposals for prospective clients and generate massive results for them or charge more for your services. If you're an in-house marketer, right, you're working for someone else, you could use this kind of data to present a comprehensive SEO strategy to management or impress potential employers with an awesome SEO strategy or proposal, right? Great, cool. Yeah, so uh, so if, if anyone has any additional questions, we do have to wrap this up now. If you email help at serankingcom um, to, to email these guys, hello at clickminded.com to email us. Just a follow-up email going out um, in just a little bit, but we have to end it now. Um, so thank you all so much for joining. We really appreciate it. The replay's coming out a little bit later. We appreciate your time, and thank you so much for joining us. And Andrew, thank, thank you so much for, for inviting really me. Yeah. Fantastic, man. I'm really excited to be a part of this webinar, to have been a part of this webinar with you. And I'm just looking forward to uh, more, more, more uh, cooperation with you. So just... Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, really appreciate it. Thanks for inviting me. And thanks so much for joining. Uh, we'll see you all later. Yeah, bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>